Hello, my name is Chris Flowers and I'm here uh, with Marty Hermanson who's running for the state chairman of the Republican Party. Uh, I'm doing the interview for the young Republicans and I uh, just wanted to thank Marty for uh, taking the time to you know interview with me and things like that. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Just wanted to uh, introduce the young Republicans to Marty. He's currently the uh, chairman of uh, Pinal County and he's also, but now he's in the process of running for uh, the state chairman of the uh, entire uh, state of Arizona for the Republican Party. So wanted to ask Marty a few questions, that way you get to know him, that way you can uh, make an educated vote. Perfect. All right. And uh, one of the first questions I ask is, tell us about Marty, tell us about you know, the accomplishments that you have, uh, that you've made as you know, the Pinal County Chairman, and how you'll incorporate those in, you know, as a state chairman. Yeah, I think that the uh, when I got elected uh, Pinal County Republican Party Chairman in uh, January of 2009, um, I immediately put the entire executive committee together and we all met as a, on a retreat that we basically took eight hours from uh, eight to about four o'clock in the afternoon laying out specific goals. We looked at where we were as far as the precinct committeemen, the count that we had, mm -hmm. and we looked at where we needed to be by the end of 2009. So our goal was to double the amount of PCs that we had in 2008 basically and go from 94 to 188 was the goal. Uh, at the end of 2009, we ended up with 192. Uh, the goal was to raise $5,000 in that year. We came a little bit short of that. We kind of got late to start because we had this company that was gonna charge us $1,000 a month, but they wouldn't bill us until they got money in. And they said they were gonna get, you know, raise over $100,000. I went, well, we don't have to do anything. And $12,000 to raise 100,000, we all thought that was a good deal, uh, but by a certain time we said this is not working, nothing's coming in, and so I had to fire the, the company that was doing it, and uh, we started our own fundraising, and I said, I, I could raise zero amount of dollars just as good as you guys can at this point, so uh, so we went out and, and raised some money, but we did, uh, one thing that we did go from is we started with a bank account of $1,999, uh, we went over $10,000 uh, by this year, and obviously we spent quite a bit of that on our slate for our, our candidates. And that was, and we wanted to also expose our party to uh, the public, because a lot of people, for some reason, didn't think that there was a Republican Party in Pinal County. So we got into parades, we got our booth out at, at uh, fairs and events, so we, we did, I believe, 11 total events last year, and nine parades. So. I got in the back of a car quite a bit. Uh, we also looked at uh, the landscape of registered voters. And uh, traditionally, Pinal County has always been a very blue county. Um, they've always outnumbered us in uh, voter registrations, um, elected offices, and everything. So in 2008, we broke records by winning eight elections, which you know, included Sheriff Paul Badview and uh, County Supervisor Brian Martin. And so we won eight and everybody was all excited about that because that was a, a milestone in, in 2008. So, you know, during the retreat we really put all of our measures in place and we put our blueprint in, in place to set us up for 2010. Voter registration was very important to us. Uh, and that's what the booths were there for and every time we would talk to people. It was great when we would uh, have conversations with independents that uh, they, they'd say, well, we were angry with the Republican Party, that's why we became independent. And I said, well, if you're angry with the party, come back to the party. Because that way you have a voice and do something about it. And that's why I ran for county chair at the, at the time, because I wanted to see our party get to another level. So everything that we did in 2009 set us up for 2010. Uh, 2010, we had quite a few accomplishments. Uh, one, the two biggest ones was obviously the election. Uh, we, there was 23 partisan races uh, that were on November 2nd, we won all 23. Uh, I was expecting 18 for sure, that I was confident in. There were some that I wasn't as confident in, but it was a clean sweep. And uh, back in July 2nd of 2010, we, for the first time ever, uh, topped the Democrats as having most registered voters. And now we have a 1,378 voter registration lead over the Democrats right now, and we'll continue to grow. So we, we put plans in place, which I think is very important 
because you can't measure success and failure if you don't have specific measurable goals out there. So we set ourselves up to be ready for 2010. To answer what, uh, what I could do for the state, I want to take that same blueprint, if you will, and measure and take it to the state level. Um, I think that at the state party we need to have some uh, structure and organization. And I think that that is going to be part of that. And I think if we take the Pinal County blueprint, take it to the state, party, I think we're going to see the same results. Okay. Excellent. I think in 2012, uh, the key will be unity. Uh, the left is already trying to fragment us, uh, Tea Party versus the Republicans, and unfortunately, you know, we're falling for it. Right. Okay. So, how are you going to unite us on the state level? Well, we, got to, we have to, first of all, just not use the term unity as a buzzword. We have to believe in it, commit to it and uh, work together to bring unity. It's not going to take me to do it. It's going to take everybody in the Republican Party to come together, take, you know, check your egos at the door, and be ready to go out there. We have to trust each other. That's the other thing. I think right now there's, there's, uh, we don't have the unity because a lot of people are not trusting each other right now in our own party. And you're right, the Democrats are sitting back watching us uh, uh, have this uh, cat fight that we got going on in our party. But I think with, Two things that, Pinal even had a, a unity issue uh, when I came on, and there was that division. Uh, I think that two things are going to happen if, uh, through leadership if you want to truly be unified. And that would be one is lead by example. Mm -hmm. And the results come in, come in that people are seeing something happen. So that's going to be one is like people want to be part of something that's being successful. So if they've seen successes or seen changes, People will unify. Um, we had uh, issues in Pinal County that I would say 80% of the people that were divided in the party actually came to unify with the people that were really getting out there and making these changes happen because it's not like anything. People want to be on a winning team. Not many people want to be a losing team. So a lot of, a lot of those people that were divided against the county got on the bus. Some people stayed on the curb. That's, that's, I think that's part of the way it's going to happen, but I think that as I try and show leadership and try and bring the unity to the party, uh, it's it could be through some creative things. I was just talking to somebody yesterday. I was like, I might show on the screen the Barack Obama's picture and say, "There is the enemy, not the people in this room." It, it's corny, but yeah, it gets it gets the mes message out there. So I think that uh, to unify the party, we have to bring success. We have to show that there is a, a turnaround in the party. And uh, through that, people will climb on board. But it's going to take all of us, not just me. Now, I've seen you speak at several engagements. Yeah. Uh, and I think the one thing that I, I felt, and I've talked to people that were there, that what really united everybody is that you're, you're speaking from tested principles. It was very constitutional orientated. It was very, you know, very Reagan-esque in the way of limited government, fiscal responsibility, strong national defense. So I think that was the one thing too that you brought to the table that like that every that communicated to everybody, whether they were quote unquote Tea Party or Republican, and that everybody could could get behind when you I think you, you would agree with that. And I'm very passionate about our party principles and values. Uh, for for whatever reason for the last ten years it's kind of disappeared on us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the message is there. We we're not good at delivering that message. So that was one of the the uh, the uh, things that I really wanted to focus on was to get the party back to the basics, get us back to the principles and values that we all join the Republican Party because of those principles and values. So I think if we stay on message, we everybody knows what our party principles and values are. But if if we're going to be good at communicating it, we have to start communicating it from within the party, and then you. You know, start talking to uh, people outside the party. But I think that's where you know the party principles is what we're all Republicans for. And if we don't believe it, if we don't communicate it, then we're just going to be this this party that's kind of trying to find its way. Mm 